Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and today we're gonna do something that we tried to do last time we were in New York. If you remember when we went to the KISS concert, we met up with Vinny Gonzalez, who was like super autograph collector his whole life. He be in, ended up through there, became friends with Muhammad Ali, Robert De Niro, and KISS, as well as Aerosmith and countless others. Today we're going out to his house in Long Island. We're gonna stop and pick up some pizza to uh, make put Vinny in a good mood and then he's gonna show us his autograph collection. Jaws with us and my buddy Mike's going. Should be a great day. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. So we're in Queens today picking up some pizza and Mike has recommended New Park Pizza today. So we're picking it up now and taking it out to Vinny's house. Pilgrim Psych Center? <laughs> We got the pizza. The pizza is amazing. Take a look at that. Oh yeah. So here's our buddy Vinny. Here's our buddy Vinny Gonzalez, and Vinny has some of the coolest, not only autographs but autograph stories that go along with him. So I'm going to show you some of the things that he has, and then we're going to ask him how he got it or how he's affiliated with these people. Like Muhammad Ali, right over your shoulder. How did you get? A big signed poster to you from Muhammad Ali. I called him up on the phone. He was staying at the pa the Plaza in New York, and he was up in his room already. It was about eleven o'clock at night. And I was waiting for him to come back. I don't know. Still to this day, to this day, I don't know how the fuck he got in the the Plaza without me seeing him going in. But anyway, it was about eleven o'clock. I said to my friend Tommy. Cool. Uh, um, I'm going to call up this room. Back then, everybody used to put their names on. Most of the people put their names under each other. So I called the room, and he picked up. I didn't know it was him. I said, can I please talk to Mr. Muhammad Ali? <clears throat> and he gets on the phone. And I go, when did you get back? I was waiting here from 9 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Where were you? I go, now, I go, could you come down and sign my stuff for me? You can't do that now with stars. Yeah. He said, I said, could you, he goes, no, why don't you come up to my room? Yeah, those, those pictures of me and him are in his room. You could see the curtains are back in them. And uh, we went up to his room, me and my friend Tommy. He took that picture of me and him, a, a couple of different shots. Him punching me in the face, me punching him in the face. Was he a nice guy on Amazing. first meeting? Yeah. And then I used to go every like couple of months when he was in town, go see him. We would watch movies. We watched. The only movie I remember that we watched was um, Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, really? <laughs> and I just became really close to him. Look what he wrote on there. So there it says right. to Vinny from Muhammad Ali, three time heavyweight boxing championship of the. And he drew a planet like a world that's great it says October 22nd 1980 and it says hope to see you soon Wow you guys really were friends yeah and we hung out with him like for a couple hours we couldn't believe it and when we left I was saying to Tommy I go Tommy he didn't know us from a hole in the wall we could have been two fucking nut jobs <laughs> and, and he let us into his room with him was he in town for a fight, or what? What do you I think? I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, that's when he signed all my stuff, and he did that whole big thing on his table up in the Plaza Hotel. That's awesome. And when he would come in, I'd go there and say, "You want to watch a movie tonight?" And I'd watch a movie tonight with him. But then when he started getting sick, and I yeah. didn't go back much because he was, you know. Now, when I came in, I noticed a uh, a painting of Robert De Niro upstairs, and it was inscribed and signed out to you by Robert De Niro. Right. Robert De Niro's been to this house, hasn't he? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. How did you get to know Robert De Niro? I went for an autograph from De Niro. Uh, somebody told me where he lived. I go, could you tell me where Robert De Niro lives? And the person said, I'll tell you where he lives, you know, because all collectors, you know, are tight-lipped, you know. Yeah. He goes, I'll tell you where he lives, Vinny, but he's not a very nice guy. And he gave me his uh, address. I went there for like two days. 
He goes, Vinny, be careful with him. The third day, it was we got there 11 o'clock in the morning, and it was 3.30 in the morning. And I said, I'm going home. I got to leave. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And it was a cold November, a, a cold November night, a, a, a not normal cold. It was like freezing. Yeah, it was a <laughs> freezing night. And I started up my car. Thank God it was cold because I had to sit there. Then you used to let your car warm up. So I started the car. Tommy's sleeping right in the next chair. And all of a sudden, while the car's warming up, like I'm parked here. <laughs> there you go. That's for Mike Altini. <laughs> so, the car, uh, while my car's warming up, his car was coming the same way, like two lanes. I was parked at the hotel, though, before him. And his car came past me right here, backed up, and then backed up in front of me. And I looked at when he. This is like three o'clock in the morning now. Tommy, I am stuck at Tommy. Tommy, get up, get up. De Niro, it's De Niro. And he went to get out of the car, so I, because he was half asleep. I said, no, no, let him get out of the car first, because then we got him. Don't let him get it. Don't do it in the car, because he could pull away. I said, but once they drop him off and they're gone, we got him. So he gets out of the car. He went and got his ba backpack. That's what he... And when he, he was sitting in the front seat with the guy driver. Now, just out of curiosity, like what movies, like at this time, what would he have been known for? Had he done what had he done up to this point? Oh wow! Had he done Raging Bull or anything oh, yet, yeah. or Taxi yeah, Driver? Yeah, Raging Bull. No, taxi Driver was done before I met him. That was the movie that was out, though. Okay, okay. So you were like the height of his prime, right? Like, right. All of a sudden, he gets out of the car and he's walking to the door. And I said, come on, let's go. We get out of the car. It was a little Honda Civic back then. Two fucking obese guys getting out of the car. Looked like the car, the car at the, uh, you know, Circus. the and shit. <laughs> all the fat people getting out of this little car. We got out of the car. We scared the shit out of him. I go, Mr. De Niro. And he went like this. And I go, please, Mr. De Niro, please. I said, don't leave. I know you're not too nice, I heard. And... I know you must not like people here. And he goes, who told you I'm not nice? I said, oh, all the collectors know that. And uh, I go, could you sign for me, please, Mr. De Niro, please? He goes, because he didn't hate to sign. He went, what do you think that is? Do you think he just gets asked so much or he yeah. doesn't like personal space invasion? Yeah, he's very shy, believe it or not. Okay. So he goes, I'll sign only one for you. I said, that's great. I had like 12 things with me. He wound up signing every one because we were talking. And I started telling him jokes and he, he was getting into it. And he kept signing. He goes, oh, I guess I signed them all. Am I done? I said, no, now you got to sign my friend Tommy's stuff. <laughs> so we signed the stuff. He signed all the stuff. I said, Mr. De Niro, thank you. Thank you for everything you did for us. Um, I don't know how I could ever repay you. And he goes, okay, thank you. He's walking into the Mayflower Hotel. Right next door to the Trump. They tore it down now. But right next door, you can hit it with a baseball. Of course, the Trump is here. And that build is right here. I go, thanks for everything. So I got back in the car. I'm letting it warm up. Two minutes later, he comes walking back out of the friggin' hotel, De Niro. And he comes walking straight from my car. I'm like, oh, fuck, Tommy. He, look at him, he's got a pen and everything. He's got to probably take my license plate number and all the shit. I was young. So, uh, well, all my friends were going to bars and everything out here. I was hanging out with celebrities of Manhattan. I go, look, he's coming with a pad. So, I didn't, he's standing there and he bangs on the window. And Tommy goes, open the window. So, I opened the window and he goes, could you get out of the car for a second? I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, fuck. I go, I get out of the car, I'm standing there, Tommy's in the car. He goes in, he's holding his face like this, he's going. He goes, you know, I'm going to be doing a movie in a few months. It's called The King of Comedy. He goes, I would love for you to be in it with me, and I, you know, if you want to hang out. 
This is like 3.30 in the morning. I look at Tommy in the car. I go, did you hear him? He said, well, he's going to do a movie and put me in there. I go, well, get out of here. <laughs> and he goes, give me your, your, your name. So I gave him my name, my address, my telephone number, and my work number. I used to work in Looney Tunes record store. And, and um, he goes, I will call you this Wednesday. This was a, a Sunday. I'll call, he goes, I'll call you this coming Wednesday. Make a long story short, I go to work. Everybody knew I collected autographs. And so I said to my boss and everybody, I said, De Niro, who did you get last night? I said, De Niro. And I was exhausted. I get home till 4 in the morning. I had to go to work. I go, he's going to call here Wednesday. They go, he probably just said that to you to get rid of you. I said, I don't know. So anyway, Wednesday comes. He didn't call. Thursday came. He didn't call. Friday comes. And they were like, see, you know, my boss calls me in the back room. Vinny, Vinny. Because De Niro's on the phone. And I picked, they were freaking out. He goes, Vinny, I hope I didn't get you in trouble. I said, no, uh, Mr. De Niro. He goes, call me Bobby from now on. I said, okay. I said, uh, no, Bobby. I said, they're, they're all freaking out. What, are you kidding me that you're calling? And he goes, listen, I had to fly to L.A., I had to go to L.A. for a, a day or two, and I couldn't call you on Wednesday. I'm very, very sorry. I was like, oh, I was wondering. And I go, he goes, listen, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, nothing. He goes, would you like to come and meet Martin Scorsese? He's a director. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm sure you know who he is. I said, no, I never heard of him, which I didn't. I didn't now I know. He's, yeah, yeah. But I, and, um. He goes, okay, you're going to be, you, you want to come for dinner tomorrow at my house, and you talk to Marty. And I said, yeah, sure. At 3.30 in the morning, saying, De Niro's put me in a muse, and my parents thought I was out of my mind. <laughs> so he said to me, you know, I think you'd be great to be in the movie. I'm like, get out of here, Mr. De Niro, Bob. I go, get out of here. So anyway, the next day I go over there, I met Martin Scorsese. You know who he is? Martin Scorsese. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Him. Would you consider him big? Yeah, I would, Vinny. I mean, he's done. He's not a Spielberg. Yeah, I think he. I think he is. To me, I mean, he did The Departed. He did Taxi Driver, Raging Bull. I mean, he's done a lot of really amazing movies. Yeah. And he goes to me, "What are you doing next week?" I get now that I'm in his house. He goes. Well, I said, "I don't know. I'm probably getting autographs. I'll be in the city getting autographs." And he said. Uh, is it okay if I come over your house? And I said, why? He goes, I'd like to, could I come over your house? I said, yeah, sure. My mother's Italian. She'll make you the best Italian meal ever. He goes, make sure though that it's okay with your mom and dad. I said, they, are you kidding me? So anyway, I called my house up. They knew I had to come into the city that day to meet Robert De Niro. So now they're like, wow. And, um, I said, Bobby, yeah, you come, Bob, whatever. Bobby, you're coming uh, next Sunday. My mother said it's done. So the week before, that couple nights before, he won the Oscar for Raging Bull. Wow. And he came over to my house, and my mother goes, I can't believe he just won the Oscar. We're watching him on TV, win the Oscar, and he's walking up my driveway. And he came in, and we had a great time with him. And he gave me a lot of shit, you know. Oh, really? Over the years, he gave me a lot of things. Oh, like memor not not like busting you. Oh, like, no, 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 he, no, he's giving you actual physical memorabilia. Right, right. What is he giving you? Because you told me you have a bunch, uh, like yeah, you have a yeah, you have a bunch kind of like locked away that would be kind of a pain for us to get out. But why don't you tell us what some of the stuff that he's given you? His taxi driver jacket. Wow. Box of gloves from Raging Bull. He bought me a gold medallion for the movie he wrote on it. He gave you this? Him and, him and Martin Scorsese that I did the movie on the back. He wrote to the king of comedy, Vinny, look, Vinny Gonzalez. Look at that. You can see the faces in there. Vinny. Thanks. Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, 10-10-81. The king of comedy. That is so cool, Vinny. Oh, so, so anyway, then uh, I met Martin Scorsese, 
He was a really nice guy, great guy and everything. Did you realize, or do you realize now that what they were doing was they, they liked you and, and he was he kind of realized he could put a little bit of you into the I guess character? I didn't know it, but yeah. Uh, they told me, yeah, he, he's using you as a, you know, as a study you. Yeah, yeah. Then um, he said, okay, we're starting the movie this time. Uh, I, you know, get, he came over to my house. Then when he was leaving, I made him sign a bunch of shit. And then <laughs> when he was leaving, I said, Bobby, is it okay if I come back? To your house one day, you know, and, and just wait outside of my car for you. He going, why do you want to do that? I said, cause I want stuff for it, with some more stuff for the He goes, Vinny, you don't have to wait for me no more. Just come and bang on my door. And I was like, wow, really? He goes, yeah, and that was it. Then we became, friends. and he signed a bunch of pictures for me, and and you guys still talk to this day. Yes, that's so awesome. And right there you have a script from Raging Bull and a script from Taxi Driver in there that you haven't had him sign yet. No, I didn't even know I had them. Mikey just found them, huh? Mikey Love! <laughs> Mikey Love finds everything. And then I mentioned when I first came in I saw a painting of Robert De Niro. This is not only signed and inscribed to Vinny by Robert De Niro, but it's a real painting. And Robert brought it over here for Vinny himself. <laughs> Take a look at this says to Vinny to Vinny and family take care and then very bottom it says Bob De Niro and if you doubt Vinny's story then why is there a picture of Robert De Niro with Vinny's parents <laughs> in this house that would have been taken right there. So Vinny, you were you still collect, even yeah. though you've been in the hospital, like freaking almost died, yeah. you still go out and you still run into people. Who are some of your recent experiences that people you've run into or got autographs from? Billy Joel again, I get him all the time. Billy Joel, wow. Yeah. Nice guy or, or amazing guy. Excellent. You're lucky if nowadays because of this eBay shit and everything, everybody thinks you're selling it. Right, but that's what I was some wondering. there are true fans like me that I get in and play, put them up in my room. But now they think everybody is selling it. I don't sell my stuff. Here's a signed, a big, big signed picture of Billy Joel. That's like poster size. Okay, put it this way. Now, I was telling you, right, that uh, you're lucky if you get one autograph from people. So tell us about the Robert Downey Jr. We went for Robert Downey Jr. A few weeks back, me and my friend and his son, and he comes up out of it, flew out of his driveway through the Hamptons. So right away we're following him, which that was a bad idea. <laughs> Very bad for idea. For future autograph yeah, seekers. He, he stopped the car in the middle of the highway and pulled over. I started screaming at us. I said, just you keep your fucking distance or I'm going to call the cops right now. And he's holding his phone in his hand. Go ahead. And he said, I'll call the cops right now. And we let him leave. It's like, well, I guess we're not getting him. He freaked. I mean, freaked. You could see the veins in his, uh, his uh, head pounding. Let me ask you a question. Will you ever try and get his autograph again? I'll never go to his house again. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I wouldn't go to his house. But if I saw him, which how could you forget me? He's going to tell me to go fuck him to myself. Well, if you shave, maybe you'll be okay. I'll lose some weight. But I really, I had, oh man, I had some great pictures of him. I was up to him like you are, like this. And he went, it's not going <laughs> to happen. He jumped in the car, he took off. Well, after I jumped in my car and took off and followed him. He went down this one-way street near the water. I went right down and we, we literally, he got stopped at the water's edge. And he, there was no way he would, we had to back up for him to back up. Oh. And he <laughs> hit the fucking roof. 
Yeah, I, I guess I can see that now that I've heard the story. <laughs> yeah. He had his wife with him, his kids. I didn't know that. Okay. You don't follow somebody with their wife and kid. And he took pictures of my friggin' uh, license plate. I would say he was a little upset. Yeah, I guess so. I was like, please, just one autograph. And he went, it's not going to happen. So, Vinny, you have probably more kiss in this room than anything. How did that all happen? I used to, well, when I was a kiss fan, in the early, early days, I got into them and then they started putting out all kinds of stuff. And I said, you know, I would like to meet somebody. It wasn't enough for me to play their music. I said, you know, I have no brothers or sisters, so I didn't have anybody turning me on to the music. I listened to what I liked by myself, and I was like, whoa, this. See, I grew up with Zeppelin and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, Queen, Kiss, all of them. My friend John Hart, he's bodyguard. Do you know who he is? No, I never met him. Do you, you, don't, you don't know the name? I don't think so. Well, well, he, Other than Mike told me stories about him, but I, I never met well, him is he, what I mean. If, you know, he was the head of security. He was everything, and he took a liking to me. He used to call me Whopper. <laughs> because the, the Big Mac, yeah. I mean because of the Burger King Whopper. So my name was Whopper all the time. And he just took a liking to me, and he would start telling me everywhere they were going to be. Cause, and I said, nobody else, just you. And I would keep going and going and going, just like a regular fan. Did you happen to ever see them without the makeup yeah, during that time? time? You did, okay. All the time. The first time I met him, Paul was at... Um, the Academy of Music, I think seeing Judas Priest. And I went up to him and I would talk to him and then every now, every, he used to go to 90% of the concerts at the, the, the Palladium. Oh, cool. So I would be there all the time looking for him. With stuff to get signed or just All to... the time, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we waited days at concerts that he never showed up for, days. But when I met John, I go, are you here for one of the guys from Kiss? This is when I first met him, and he looked at me like, was like a Hell's Angels type guy, but he's like my best friend. I love him to death. Uh, if it wasn't for John Hart, John, you know I love you. Um, he would tell me when I could come or no, you better stay home this day, because they got to get out of there faster. Whatever John said, I did, but 99% of the time he'd call me, Whopper, we're going to be at, uh, we're going to be at SIR Studios on East... 52nd Street. We're going to be there for a whole week for pra practicing from the tour from six, from four to whatever, like nine. And I would go down there and hang out, watch them do their sets in the room. And I would, and then he would, they, they would start say, "Hey, Vinny, how you doing?" And uh, and they never got annoyed by seeing you like repeatedly, or they just something about you they, they were cool with. Uh, yeah, and they don't like. Because I mean, you were going to a lot of places you shouldn't have even known they were going to be at. No. So I would think that would kind of annoy them. Did it? They, they would say to me, "But how the fuck do you know <laughs> when we're leaving and coming?" I just told them recently. I said, but I never said it. In, it was John Hart. If it wasn't for you, John. I wouldn't be friends with Kiss at all right now, or it would have been a hell of a lot harder. But you got me right into the, right into the heat of it. They were the biggest man in the world, and thank God I met you. And they still treat you great, don't they? Amazing. You have original I, instruments, costumes. You have all kinds of stuff. I in them. did so many things. I always that I get in trouble for. I, I get mad and I start yelling and cursing at people, and. Uh, Jeez. No, they let me get away with murder, and I'm not glad, but I'm glad. No, I mean, I think it's kind of, you know, fitting considering, didn't Robert De Niro offer you a job and you turned it down because of Kiss? Yes, the, yeah, because Kiss was going on tour. I said, Bobby, I'll screw you over. I won't show up, and uh, I'll tell you I'm going to show up, and I won't. Please, let's just stay friends. <laughs> and that was it, so I didn't... Uh, I would have loved to have did it, but I would have never. His Crazy Hours, Academy of Music, Kiss was playing with a band called Teenage Lust, Blue Oyster Cult. And it doesn't matter. And one other band. Well, anyway, they came on first, Kiss. I was there to see Blue Oyster Cult. I didn't know who the fuck Kiss was. 
they were only on for like 20 minutes if I remember and um when they came out I was like holy shit I was like Ralph it's fucking Alice Cooper <laughs> I thought it was Alice Cooper and when they came out they saying kiss and then Ralph's going to me but what's the kiss mean I go that's probably the name of the album like you know bad out of hell from me love well this is cool Alice Cooper's new album was called Kiss. I go, but the funny thing is now all four of them's got makeup on. So I bought it. I bought this A track and JC Pennies. <laughs> I bought it and I brought it home because I loved Alice Cooper too and played it and playing it. And I'm like, sound like Alice Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> you know, who is this? And then eventually one of my friends said, you know, asshole, you listen to the guy Alice Cooper. That's not him. That's the band called Kiss. I said, oh, I thought that was the name of the album, Kiss. So you became a Kiss fan without even knowing they without were a real that. band. Then I got backstage. They got me backstage uh, at the Calderon Concert Hall in Franklin Square near the Nass Nassau Coliseum. And, uh, I had no clue what their name was. I didn't know Paul's name, Gene's name, and none of them, but I recognized them. So me and my friend are backstage hanging out. I, we didn't know what backstage was. I said, they said, you want to get, come and get backstage? And I go, what's ba what do you mean? Backstage, what's backstage? And he goes, no, that's where the band hangs out with some of their friends, and then, you know, then you go to your seats. And I said, yeah, I'll go. And I said, uh, could I bring my friend with me? I don't want to come myself. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, now, what do I do? Where do I go? Am I got to go get a ticket? He goes, no, no, no. We'll put you on the list. And I was like, please, don't do it. And then I come here and I'm not on the list. He goes, just bring your license and uh, your name will be on the list. So we got there, me and Tommy and uh, a Ralph. And the tickets were there, and the passes were there, and I, I got, like, we put the pass on, and we walked backstage. We didn't know where the fuck we were walking, and what the, and the only, I go, there they are, they're over there. And the only way I knew who they were is because Gene said, yo, Stanley, come on, let's go. He used to call him Stanley. So he went, Stanley, come on, let's go. So I said, obviously, uh, Ralph, that's Paul Stanley. Hmm. And that's got to be Gene with the wild hair. And then Peter, when I heard Peter's voice right away, you know who he was. But yeah, the first, I thought it was Alice Cooper first. And uh, then I would start going all over, you know, to see them. They started giving me passes. Then my Lamo passes. And now they're about to call it an end. What are you going to do after that? Who are you going to see then? Have you thought about that? Yeah. Well, I, I, it's going to suck when Kiss adds it to me. Yeah, me too. It's really going to suck. Uh, I'll still keep collecting autographs. But it, like I said, it's very hard now. People don't want to give them out. Okay, here's a for instance. It, it, like, you know who Kenny Wayne Shepard is? Yeah. Blues. He only signs one. Okay, but that's better than nothing. Yeah. But, uh, and he don't even want to do the one. I met Magic Johnson. How he was had, he? He had a guy with him, and he says, Everybody, form a line. I will sign one autograph, and my man next to me is going to look at your face to make sure you don't hop back in line. And Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, he signed one autograph per person, wow. and he would sign anything. So, A basketball? Yeah, he signed. My, that's what I had, a basketball, and he signed it. Wow. I never met Magic Johnson. Countless things signed by Gene and the band. Wow, Vinny, what is that that you have there? One is of Ace's that... guitars that he gave me autographed. Wow, that is definitely an Ace guitar. Look at the headstock. Wow, that is super cool, dude. Thanks, Dad. See, I got... he signed the guitar and the case. That's awesome. You see the frets? They're lightning bolts. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I was walking away with the case in a coma, and he goes, Vinny, come back here. Let me sign the case. That is awesome. That's Ace and Vinny's mom. It's like a note by Paul Stanley. To my mom. Dear Mrs. Gonzalez, thanks for being so great. 
I could eat these all myself, but dot dot dot. I love Italian cheesecake, but you've really done more than enough. We love you, Paul. That's a real class act move. What's on your hat there? Peter Chris gave me this. And Gigi. This is, uh, you know, he only made a few of these hats. You're pretty close to Peter Chris even to this day, aren't you? Oh, very close with Peter and Gigi. They're like, he's like my older brother, Peter. Really? I love him to death. Every now and then, you know, he gets mad at me. Not mad at me, you know. I say something and that I shouldn't say, I guess. But Peter, I love Peter and his wife, Gigi. I can't stress enough. I mean, they come over my house, they have dinner here. Oh, they yeah, real uh, friends, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go over their house. That's awesome. I go over there, so, and then I just started going all over for them, traveling in the jungle. See, I'm gonna give you a pass. And that was it. I, then I was in like with the band, forget it. That's awesome. And, and he, every time, like he said, we're leaving for, you know the last trip they went to Australia? Yeah. I was at the airport when they were leaving. And the band was laughing and saying, how the fuck? It was the whole band there, John Hart, me, and my friend Nicky. And he's like, how the hell? Come on. I said, oh, I can just find out, guys. <laughs> and, you know, and John was standing there like, that's it. <laughs> so they came home uh, a few days later, like 3 o'clock in the morning, their plane landed. And, uh... Kennedy Airport. I don't know. One of the it might be Kennedy Airport. They got off the plane. They got off the plane at three forty-five in the morning, and I was there. Oh my gosh! You and must they never sleep. Out they were dead, and they came back and goes, "Fucking Vinny's here. <laughs> How the fuck did you know we were gonna come out at three o'clock in the morning over here?" I said, "I got my ways," and John Hartwood and didn't say a word. But he told me if it wasn't for John, and I love him to death, he was always great to me. Thank you, John. Here he's got a signed photo from Shelley Duvall, who was, I mean, God, look at that. That's from The Shining. Yeah. And Vinny, you said you met her right after they filmed this, right? Yeah. Can't get her autograph really anymore, I don't think. Yeah, he lives out east, about 20 miles from here. Who is this? You have a signed pick guard you told me to pick up. Who is this, Vinny? Reggie Blackmore. From? Deep Purple? Oh, from Deep Purple, yeah. You said he signed this for you and a photo. That's awesome. Here's another of Vinny's close early friends, Steven Tyler. B.B. King. There's Cheech and Chong. Mike Tyson. I was blown away by this Eddie Van Halen signed picture oh. and then noticed he's got a freaking check. From Eddie in there too. It's autographed by him and Valerie, I think. That's great, Kiefer Sutherland from The Lost Boys. Mickey Dolans, how about that? Vinny's got a little mini grand piano signed by Billy Joel. Wow. The Piano Man. That's a uh, former Mrs. Billy Joel. There's a signed taxi driver. That is incredible. Then this Telecaster is signed by Joan Jett. It says, rock this sucker. There's a signed photo of David Johansson from the New York Dolls. Rick Nielsen from Chip Trick. Gene Simmons. Look at that. That's a full band signed photo from Kiss. That's a big one. That's actually like a poster. And you eat the whole crab. And that's early, early kiss. This one is Jimmy Page, one of the hardest autographs you can ever get. He even says in interviews he doesn't believe in signing autographs. And Vinny got one. Twisted Sister. And he's got a pair of Aces boots signed. That is awesome. That is so cool. There's a painting of Ace signed by Ace. Then he's even got Grace Jones. And then every single one of these is signed. He's got I'll everything. Right up there assigned. Yeah, everything from Munsters to Freddy. He's got Chucky. 
He's got Batman and Robin. Both of those are signed. Look at that. It's kind of like a nude picture of Drew Barrymore signed. You met Pinhead? Wow. Why? Pinhead from Hellraiser. Oh, yeah. Paul Stanley to Vinny, my pal and number one fan. He's got a kick drum from Anthrax, drum head. Signed Al Pacino figure. You met Al Pacino too, huh? Oh, a million times. Another Eddie Van Halen. I met Eddie Van Halen, one of the nicest people I met. You ain't kidding. Very nice guy, especially loved his fans. And here he's got some figures signed by Alice Cooper before he was Kiss. Ha 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 ha. Before Vinny thought they were Kiss. Tim Curry. Not only Tim Curry, that's Rocky Horror Tim Curry. That's great. Dr. Frankenfurter. All those Kiss figures are all signed. There's a drum head signed by Peter Chris. That's a great one, Robert Plant. Wow, that's a really cool signature. You got Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. That's also signed by the band. Vinny, you have a Brian May News of the World signed guitar. By Brian that came back here from England after he signed it. Wow, that is cool. I got all the papers with it, he wrote. That's so cool, dude. I have the red Brian May model guitar, but I don't have that one. I certainly don't have it signed. That is cool. You know, it's in Vinny's house, so I had to ask because I saw a signature. I said, did you really get Charles Manson to sign I a did clock? His autograph. <laughs> you got his autograph? No more. Yeah, we went to, see, we went to San Quentin. <laughs> to we visit went him? To San Quentin, and he said, Vinny, it's only because it's you I'll do it. I'd say you waited for, for Charles Manson to get in his car and drive off, and then you followed him, right? <laughs> Yeah, signed meatloaf drumhead here he's got a signed knife by kane hotter who played jason that's kind of cool <laughs> kane hotter i love the look of that bridge that just looks great not all the traffic we've sat in getting to it but There's where he falls. Saturday Night Fever. Verrazano Bridge. So yesterday Mike was completely blown away that I had never tried a Feltman's hot dog. Do you want to tell them the Feltman story? The best hot dogs on the planet Earth. Okay. Why is that? Because he was the original Coney Island hot dog. So in Coney Island, there was Feltman's. It was a nice place. You sit down, you eat a hot dog, blah, blah, blah. Had a guy who worked for him named Nathan. Nathan was a swine. Nathan stole his recipe and opened up Nathan's down the block. Nathan had no business. So what he did was he went to the hospital that was close by, and he told everybody who wears a uh, the, the doctor's schmock, whatever you want to call it, if you come down, you get a free hot dog, okay? So all the doctors and everybody worked at the hospital, it looked like there was a giant crowd around. Everybody goes by, goes, wow, the doctors eat there, it must be good hot dogs. So that piece of shit stole all of Feltman's business, right? And became Nathan's. Nathan sold it to a conglomerate, they changed the recipe, they cheaped on it, blah, blah, blah. Feltman's relatives found the recipe and decided to make the original hot dog. I, I don't want to sound like a commercial, but this hot dog, this, it's crunchy, it's juicy. There's no after burp. You know, when you take, eat a hot dog and then, an hour later, you go, eh, and you taste the <laughs> hot dog again? Not with this. Dude, I love hot dogs, so I'm excited to try it. So we're going to do one fried and one boiled. Either way, it's crunchy, crunchy hot dog. Oh, man, he wasn't kidding I took one bite of the boiled one already. That was amazing. Got mustard, hot mustard and sauerkraut. Now let's do a bite of the, the fried one. That one is excellent as well. I don't know which one I like better. 
Probably, actually, probably the fried one, I think, maybe. Yeah, look at the juice. This juicy hot dogs, man. The chef. Yo, what is a juicy hot dog? You can't beat this shit. <laughs>